The firing process comprised three stages oxidation, reduction, and again oxidation. In the first oxidizing stage, the ancient craftsmen raised the temperature in the kiln by supplying oxygen. The firing chamber communicated with the lower part of the kiln where the fuel was burning, while an opening towards the top of the kiln allowed the gases formed by combustion to escape. When the desired temperature was reached and the clay paint began to vitrify, the kiln was sealed, interrupting the production of oxygen and in this way decreasing the temperature. In this reducing stage, the nanocrystals of magnetite are formed in the paint layer and the black, black-blue colour is achieved. In the final oxidizing stage, the potters open the aperture in the kiln, so increasing the temperature. Thus, the colour contrast between the black glaze and the red ground of the body was achieved. This final stage of reoxidation demands considerable attention to ensure that the temperature does not rise too much, in which case the glaze turns red again. The range of temperatures demanded in order to create the black glaze is a very small. The best quality is achieved at 880 to 950 degrees Celsius. How could they calculate the temperature so accurately in antiquity when there were no thermometers or thermostats? With the eye, the specialists reply, and this was the reason why the task of the firer in a pottery workshop was so important. If you talk to traditional potters who fired in a kiln fueled by wood, you will realize that they know very well how to distinguish the suitable temperatures from the so-called black body radiation. The indicator is the colour of the kiln's interior. At 720 to 730 degrees, the kiln becomes red. At 800 degrees, it starts to turn orange. And shortly after, it begins to turn white. Until at 950 degrees, it glows. While at 1000 degrees, it is bright white. All these signs indicate that the ancient potters of Attica were not only talented, but also had a high level of technological know-how. This high level is indicated too by the conscientious choice of their materials, not just for preparing the clay paint, but for the body of the vases too. It seems that these materials were standardised, and for this reason specialist scholars suggest that there was a central disbursement of them. <laughs>